Welcome to Triumph and Disaster, a show dedicated to manly creativity and culture. Brought to you by your host, Cameron McHarg. Hey guys, this is Cameron McCarg. I am the creator of the Triumph and Disaster podcast and blog. The blog is at triumphanddisasterblog.com and I encourage you guys to go check it out. Check it out often. So when you look at guys uh, past and present like Ernest Hemingway or Sam Peckinpah or Steve McQueen or uh, Joe Rogan or Henry Rollins, Chase Jarvis, John Houston, Hunter S. Thompson, Bill Burr, John Milius... Uh, Leave Marman, Clint Eastwood, Charles Bukowski, Joseph Conrad, Tom Hardy even. Just the list goes on and on. What this is all about basically is a celebration of uh, culture and creativity for guys, guys. Um, that's the through line here. Uh, a little bit about me. I grew up uh, in the Pacific Northwest in a city called Everett, Everett, Washington, which is basically kind of a working class, blue collar town. A lot of people work for Boeing. Um, it used to be sort of a pulp mill kind of logging town. And I grew up around kind of a tough group of dudes, really. You know, we ended up uh, kind of running around, getting in trouble, drinking beer and stuff pretty early and trying to chase girls and doing that sort of thing. And, uh, you know, these are some pretty rugged, rugged guys up there. But I was kind of a sensitive sort of artistic kid. But the thing was, is I kind of had to keep it, or at least I felt like I had to keep it on the down low a little bit. I didn't really fit in up there. You know, I didn't fit in with them. And all my buddies knew who I was, and and they knew I didn't really totally belong. I mean, I had one foot there, one foot somewhere else, you know. And uh, I ended up joining the Marine Corps because I was a little lost. Um, when I was younger, I was really involved in drama. I used to draw a lot, that sort of thing. But like I said, I kind of had to keep it on the side. And when I was in high school, I had to just basically, or I felt like I had to sort of just eliminate it altogether. It just wasn't a cool thing to do. And uh, when I got out, I had this moment where it was a real moment of desperation when I was young. Uh, you could even call it a nervous breakdown. It was something where I just felt like I had to be really honest with myself. I wasn't on the right track. And I was forced to sort of confront myself. And... Um, so I got back into doing what I loved, and I got back into uh, into theater and acting. And the thing was, is I still kind of looked a different part. I felt a different part. And in a lot of those worlds, at least at that you know place and at that time, you know, by a look at me, you wouldn't think that I would do that. Or if you were involved in that, you you know, maybe I wouldn't. Uh, I'd be instantly disrespected for you know being a certain way. I remember going to a retrospective for Monty Hellman. He's this director from the late 60s and 70s. He's still around. Um, he directed like Tulane Blacktop and uh, some other movies I like, Ride the Whirlwind, Jack Nicholson, late 60s. These were, were the existential westerns. And uh, so I went to this retrospective, and I remember this guy, you know, this sort of black turtleneck kind of guy. <laughs> Uh, actually said something like in line, like, are you sure you're in the right place? You know, this isn't Star Wars. <laughs> and I was just, uh, I, I was pissed, but I just, you know, I, I just kept it to myself because I actually probably knew more about Monty Hellman than he did. But it's it's just a certain uh, image, you know, that I have and, and that I had. And, and uh, I didn't fit in. And I felt like I didn't fit in. But then looking back at, at these kind of guys, these are the kind of guys, the kind of filmmakers, the kind of writers, the kind of actors that I love. I love the most, and they're really fucking good. By the way, quick disclaimer, I'm going to be swearing a lot here and there, so if you're going to be offended by bad language, you might not want to follow this podcast <laughs> because it just comes out of me whenever I'm excited about something. So that's going to happen. These guys are fucking great. And uh, so this is sort of a celebration of these kind of artists, these kind of guys' guys, and you know, I mentioned a lot from the past, but, and there still are a lot in the present. And I, I'm not one of these guys who feels like, you know, I'm not going off about some sort of a war on men or some sort of a big, you know, anti-feminist diatribe or anything like that. I'm not, I'm not really politically involved in that stuff at all. And it's not what this is about. This is really more of a celebration of it. And, um, you know, there is less now than there used to be, I think. Um, 
of this influence of these kind of guys. I, you know, you, I don't know who really the modern Sam Peckinpah is, for example. If you don't know who he is, he's, uh, well, if you know the movies like Straw Dogs or The Wild Bunch, look it up. If you don't know what it is, look it up. Um, guys like Lee Marvin, these are actors and directors and people like that in the past that um, there just aren't as many of them anymore. And I would like to see that come back. I'd like to see that celebrated and come back a little bit more. Uh, so that is what this is all about. Um, if you're wondering what Triumph and Disaster is and what that title is all about, it's actually a line from a Rudyard Kipling poem called If, which is basically about manhood. And when you go to the blog, you'll see a, uh, on the header of the, of the blog, you'll see sort of a, a video of Dennis Hopper, old school, on the old Johnny Cash show. He's wearing a cowboy hat and a denim jacket. And he's reciting something. And I'll have it on the blog. But uh, I thought I'd play it for you because he's actually reciting this poem. If This is from the old Johnny Cash show, Dennis Hopper. He's a young guy. He looks like he's probably maybe in his late 20s, maybe 30 years old. But this is If by Rudyard Kipling. You got something else you want to do yeah. for us? We'd love to hear I got something. something I want to do for you. And okay. uh, I think it's something that uh, you and I and everybody here can understand. It's an Englishman wrote it, but uh, it's uh, the middle word in life in the English language, language, and it's called If. If is the middle word in life. We've got a special spot for you. Dennis Hopper, you. ladies and gentlemen. If you can keep your head when all about you losing theirs and blaming it on you. If you can trust yourself when all men doubt you. But make allowance for the doubting too. Or being lied about. Don't deal in lies. Or being hated. Don't give way to hating. And yet, don't look too good and talk too wise. If you can dream, but not make dreams your master. If you can think, but not make thoughts your aim. If you can meet with triumph hmm, and disaster, and you just treat these two imposters just the same. Or bear to hear the truth that you've spoken, twisted by knaves to make a trap for fools. Or watch the things that you've given your life to broken. And stoop and build them up again with worn out tools. If you can make one heap of all your winnings, huh? and risk it in one turn of pitch and toss and lose. Start again at your beginnings. Never breathe the word about your loss. If you can force your heart and your nerve and your sinew to serve your turn long after they are gone and so hold on when there's nothing in you except the will which says to them, hold on. If you can talk with crowds and keep your virtue, or walk with kings, but never lose the common touch. If neither foes nor loving friends can hurt you, if all men count with you, but none too much, if you can fill the unforgiving minute with 60 seconds worth of distant run, yours is the earth and everything that's in it. And which is more, you're going to be a man, my son. I want to remember that.
Billy John Carter someday. <laughs> Thank you, Billy. So that was it, you guys. That was if. That was where Triumph and Disaster comes from. I love how he uh, he jacked up that uh, that that stutter there in the beginning. Language. I'm gonna be. I'm not. Here's the deal, and I've already done it many times here. I'm not. <laughs> I'm not gonna be super slick in this podcast. I'm not gonna edit the shit out of it. Whatever is in the conversation, whatever happens, is pretty much what's gonna go into the podcast. So just know that ahead of time. Whatever goes down in the talk, you're gonna hear it, and it's not gonna be super slick. I'm just gonna be honest. And this is a blog and a podcast. By the way, on the blog, you're going to be seeing a little bit more um, from me. You might see some more stuff that I do. I mean, I, I'm involved in several different things, but it could be anything. It could be a little bit on self-development, you know, as an artist. It could be about maybe my crazy peyote ceremony uh, in the Apache Nation over in Arizona a handful of years ago. Or it could be about a photo a photo uh, blog about when I went to this, uh, this really amazing outdoor middle of nowhere blues club down in Compton. It's amazing stories like that. I might put some things in like that. So it's not just going to be strictly, uh, about the guests and about the podcast. So there'll be a lot of other things over there that are cool and some thoughts and, uh, adventures that I may have had. And, um, but yeah, back to what I was saying before, Everybody, everybody is welcome. This is a, this is a thing about, this is a blog and a podcast about uh, celebrating culture and creativity for guys, 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 that sort of thing. But everybody's welcome. It's not some sort of anti-feminist thing. It's not some sort of war against men thing, nothing like that. It's just a celebration of it and sort of a, a push for a revival of it, of, uh, of this kind of creativity. So it's really about living life with your eyes and your mind fully open with full expression and with your and with balls completely intact all these guys that i mentioned before these artists this is art with balls you know and this is what i respect and this is what i want to encourage and i want to encourage every one of you out there to do this uh, you might be maybe you're a guy listening maybe you i don't know you you're a family man you have a family you, you have a business or some kind you live in rural Kansas or something somewhere and uh, maybe you write or maybe you want to write on the side but it isn't you know something that you feel like you should do or have time to do and you know or maybe you're I don't know a trucker in Idaho and you're into photography maybe you like to I don't know do landscapes of mountains or something I don't know whatever fish I don't give a shit it doesn't matter what it is it doesn't matter what it is I just want it I want uh, I want this to be something that helps you uh, realize that uh, there's a lot of guys out there like you and uh, they're doing some really cool shit and I want there to be more. So thanks for being a part of this gang. I'm looking forward to, to having you here. Subscribe, give good reviews, pass it around, stick around, email me, comment. I'm looking forward to it all. Thanks a lot. <laughs> <laughs>